Hey guys, one of my dear subscribers asked about a Vim video and a Vim video you'll get. I thought the topic should be about Golang environment once again. So when I code in Golang, I must say Visual Studio Code is pretty awesome. Um, but the problem is it's just a, just a little bit slow. You see I even customized it for my Terminus font. So it's just a little bit slow and I'm usually between the terminal and then it gets even more slower. So I, instead I have um, a, a NeoVim setup that I prefer using and I think it's pretty good. Like one thing that it has is, which is quite useful, is that if I, if I, if I hover over it tells me the, the sort of type of the, of the thing in the bottom and the type of the top of the type and also I got um, the sort of completion thing uh, thanks to uh, Dioplete but let's just quickly quickly set it all up so you know how to do it yourself yay okay so first off um, we need to uh, install NeoVim using this PPA thing Uh, next we need to do, uh, we need to install oh, NeoVim, Golang something or other, Go, and this is Ubuntu. Unfortunately Ubuntu doesn't have the latest stuff, so you have to do all this little crap. Uh, I think I need pip, uh, and I'm just going to install Node.js because my NeoVim requires it. Come on. So, truth truth of the matter is, I when I first started computing at Bath University on the terminal like I'm doing here, I was a Pico user, you know, Pine, Pico, and Pico is pretty much Nano in today's world. So if you're starting off with a crappy editor like Nano, don't feel bad. You have to start somewhere. Um, and I took the leap to learn Vim and all its bindings using Vim Tutor, I think. And it, I always thought that I was like never using Vim properly because I wasn't, you know, using like half its features. But it was good when I met um, sort of other Vim users and basically you just end up using just a, a very small subset of all the features available to you. So at the moment I'm actually using NeoVim like I don't know, Vim 2.0 and I'm a bit on the fence about it but it does seem to work at the moment um, so this is why I'm using it. To be honest I'm not really loyal to any Vim, NVim or any Vim thing in, in particular. Okay so I have, uh, okay oh I should copy my configuration across. Oh. One thing I hate about um, NeoVim is this horrible sort of uh, dot config thing. Horrible. I don't like it. Well, I shouldn't shouldn't be using. It. So now I ha I should have uh, uh, I should have my Vim my NeoVim this init.vim. I hate it. I think it's all there. Importantly, it's got my plugins. So first off, I need to install um, a plugin manager for NeoVim. Yeah, I know. I know what you're going to say. And then, and then uh, let's let's start with then NVim. And then I need to go plug plug update or something upgrade or update. This actually installs everything. So I'm using Vim. I'm using a few Vim uh, uh, NeoVim. Sorry, uh, plugins. And the most complicated one, I think, is this DOP thing. You might, I don't even know what it does. Okay, so, oh, so let's try and make a program. Okay, DOP, oh, I have to. Okay, now, now I need to set up my uh, GoPath. Okay, let's first create a, 
then that, and then I need to go here. Export go path equals that. And also be careful to uh, adjust my path. So go path bin go there at the bottom. Um, okay, and then let us begin. So, oh, Diopleet is still moaning about something. I think the only way around it is to just install, is manually install this NeoVim PIP3 thing. Uh, so yeah, there's a few things to do. Install the plugin manager, manually do this PIP3 install. Oh, and um, bin path not found. Okay, well, my, my path is not set up. See if I can finally get this going. Okay, now I need to uh, install all these binaries. I do this via uh, Vimgo. It has this go install binaries thing, and that should install everything into my my go path slash bin, which is in the path because of my bash rc. What else can I tell you about editors? Um, let's see my config. I have a spell checker. I try to keep to defaults, but I absolutely fail. I'm a tab sort of guy, but with JavaScript, I'm using spaces actually. Standard JS, that's for you. Control P, I don't quite use, but the idea with Control P is just you can just get at your files. Yeah, Diopleet is the one that gives you that sort of completion. Diopleet Go does that. I'm a VimGS user. I've just commented these two out. I'm also using Ale a lot to fix my um, the JavaScript that I'm editing. I'm a big fan of like um, linting, just snapping your code to the right thing, just like Go does by default feel the same way about other languages so I like I like it rewriting my, my stuff come on must be done almost okay I think uh, I think everything's working now is it is it uh, try that again yay you see this error completion thing here and of course if you go ID equals I don't know foo Foobar, but then you use ID again here. If I if I hover over it, everything is uh, highlighted, and yeah, I like I like this environment. Of course, I'm just I'm editing, and then I'm I'm, I'm out, and I'm running my GoLang. That's just the way I work. Um, I generally just have a full window for what I'm doing, um, unless it's some sort of logging thing. If I have the if I have the space. So that's my, my Vimgo setup. It's a little bit uh, painful to set up, especially on Ubuntu, when you have to worry about recent versions of this and that. And yeah, it works pretty darn well. It's faster than Visual Studio Code. You know, I don't even think, I just gravitate towards it. So that's my Vim setup. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh my gosh, this video is 10 minutes. I'm sorry, guys. If you liked it, please, if you know better, um, Please let me know. Bye now.